As a project manager in the consulting world, you will have to deliver bad news to your clients and you will have to have difficult conversations. And that's not easy to do for a technical professional who's transitioned into project management. However, in this episode, I am thrilled to have with me Mallory Wildy, a transportation-focused civil engineer and project manager at Parametrics. And Mallory is going to talk about how she made that transition and she was able to get better at having some of those tough conversations, which has helped her to deliver high value to Parametrics clients. Let's jump right in. All right, now I'm excited to welcome our guest onto the podcast today. Mallory Wildy is a transportation-focused civil engineer and also a project manager from Parametrics. She specializes in local agency work. Mallory, welcome to the Engineering Project Management Podcast. Hey, Anthony, thanks for having me. It's great. Yeah, to be really, here. really excited to have you. We've had the we've had the opportunity to get to do a lot of work with Parametrics. It's, Parametrics is an exciting firm. Um, working on a lot of interesting projects. We've had the the pleasure to be able to help them build and deliver a project management development program. And we're happy to have Mallory here today to talk a little bit about some of the ins and outs of project management from your perspective, Mallory, as a civil engineer, kind of transportation focused. So why don't you, in your own words, just to get things rolling. Talk a little bit more about what you do yourself kind of on a daily basis in your role at Parametrics. Sure. Yeah. I've been um, with Parametrics for eight years, um, 10 years in the industry overall. Um, I work in our Bremerton, Washington office, which is a smaller community that's across the water. You have to take a ferry to get there from Seattle. Um, so I work with our local agencies primarily in, in this area. We're on a peninsula. Um, I work on projects ranging from w- roadways, stormwater conveyance and treatment, um, pet and bike improvements, trails, transit. I, I'm kind of a, when you work in a smaller community, you quickly become a jack of all trades. <laughs> um, so I, I get to work on a lot of very cool and exciting projects for those public clients. That's awesome. And before we dive into some, you know, kind of project management concepts here, Talk a little bit, if you can recall a little bit, kind of your transition into project management, like when you kind of became a quote unquote project manager, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, It wasn't anything that I, you know, intentionally was like, okay, I'm going to go become a a project manager. It was really, um, uh, it it happened organically. So um, I I've been a design lead on many projects in the area and um, a client had reached out and said, Hey, um, Mallory, we'd really like you to work on this project. And Oh, by the way, just lead it. Like we want you to lead this, this work. And I was like, Oh, okay. That sounds good. You know, the thing with um, your career in general and and project management is you can't really be scared. So you have to just kind of jump in with both feet and, and, go for it. And so um, that's what happened is I was working on this project. Um, I was the project engineer and the project manager on this project. So a smaller, smaller size project, Um, but it got my feet wet and I was able to, you know, put together a scope schedule budget, but then also deliver on that budget and just kind of see um, where things went from there. And then from that point on the phone calls really kept coming. And um, so you, you do good work and it keeps coming. So and they haven't stopped since, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I love the idea of jumping right in. I mean, I think some of the best project managers that I know, they just kind of got thrown into the fire. And, and you know, we talk about this a little bit in the in some of the, the work we've been doing with parametrics in our in our training programs is that Yes, having a company provide that type of training is really invaluable because not every firm does provide project management training, or we like to call it project management development programs. But at the same time, getting thrown into projects and also learning on the job, kind of they both kind of have to happen for you to really, you know, understand the full gamut of project management. So so Mallory, project managers are often posed with some serious challenges, of course, that can totally derail a project. Based on your experience so far, what would you say is kind of the biggest key to success in project management? 
For me, my biggest key to success has just been bringing my genuine self to each project and um, to the to the client. So, having that ability to be open and honest with your with your team and with your client is key to getting buy in um, from the project and and the team early on, um, so that you can deliver successfully on that that scope schedule budget that you put together from the outset. So, it also helps, and and we'll probably get into this later, but it also helps when you're having if you need to have a difficult conversation mm. with a client, um, if you've got that rapport with with your team and your and your client, you can really um, just keep going on that and build on that from from the outset. So, yeah, that's awesome. I, I like what you said about kind of being yourself. I think that you know the transition to project manager, which you talked a little bit about, can certainly be a challenging one, and kind of in the program that we've done with Parametrics, one of the ways we like to frame it out a little bit is you kind of become like more of a CEO of your projects, right? Where mm -hmm. like, you know, you're not so much working on your own tasks or your own schedule. You're kind of focusing on the whole team or the whole project. And I think that being said, I think what you said is really important is, yes, that's true, but you also kind of need to do it in the way that speaks to your skill sets and your strengths as an individual, because as much as it's good, you know, you need that project management support and some of those skill sets, you also got to, you know, bringing yourself to the table in a sense is provides value, right? Because there's certain things that you do really well. Um, so it's great to hear about that and hear about that, you know, the ability to communicate with the team. And so one of the things that we hear all the time in project management, Mallory, is that, you know, a project needs to be managed for scope, schedule, and budget, right? It's kind of those okay. three things that people are constantly driving home. For you as a project manager, how do you keep an eye on those three things and make sure that your projects are, projects stay on scope, on schedule, and on budget? I think it's another number of things. Um, the first is constant communication. So it starts with a solid kickoff meeting when you first um, introduce a project. So that would be, I would hold both an internal um, kickoff meeting as well as an external with your client there, but really set up, okay, you know, this is the scope that we agreed upon. This is the schedule budget. So those three things, this is what we agreed on. Here's our expectations for how to meet that. Um, and then that way they, you've got the ground rules set up early in the project. And then um, I set up weekly or biweekly meetings, depending on the project with both my internal and external team. So again, just kind of hitting on that, keeping that. So those are kind of the, that's the big thing. The other thing, these are, you know, kind of little nuances or, or other little tips and tricks that I've picked up over the last few years. And um, with COVID, use technology to your advantage. So mm -hmm. something that I've set up, I've uh, started doing is setting up teams. We use teams at Parametrics. So set up a teams channel for each of your projects and then invite your internal team so that the actual project team executing the work to that team and then also you can invite your client to that team as well mm -hmm. and and use that uh location to share files you can share you can chat you know have real-time chat um questions everything and then i also use that to um store like a decision matrix or a, a log of here's the current issues that we have on the project. And these are the questions that we have maybe for the client, or you can assign roles that, you know, make it your own, but put that on that one um, location and everybody has access to it at all times. And then the final thing that I uh, do is I get weekly budget check-ins. So um, mm -hmm. at Parametrics, we have an internal accounting. We do our timesheets weekly. And so each week we get, uh, I, I have a, um, internal budget that I get sent to me from, um, through email and it's got each of my projects, um, listed on it. And I can just click in there and, at, you know, real time, um, when those timesheets are signed, I can check in and say, okay, on this task, we're maybe looking a little bit over budget. Uh, I wonder what happened last week on that, on that particular task. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, really easy to to just kept check in and keep track um all the time that's awesome i mean lots of good stuff there in that answer so i just want to dive into a couple of those things i mean first of all i think the point about technology is a really good point you know the fact that through covid we were forced to get better at some of these technological tools and now if we can leverage them to our advantage it's really valuable and i think the one thing that you said there by having like that teams channel for your projects 
Reminds me a lot of a book I read not too long ago called The World Without Email by Cal Newport, which talks about how, you know, <clears throat> there are a lot of these like asynchronous tools now where people can chat at you all day long and stuff. And it can be a distracting thing, but it can also be a productive thing if you do it the right way. And I feel like what you've suggested by having that channel, you can kind of keep all your project communication or a large portion of it to one area. Right. So it's kind of easy to kind of manage all that communication. Like you said, you have a list of issues or items on your projects you can keep there. Because if you have like emails, phone calls, messages, it can become pretty confusing. So I really like the idea of leveraging the technology effectively. And I think the other thing that you said there that I thought was really, really important was mentioning the kickoff meeting at the beginning of projects. Because I feel like if you ask a lot of project managers, like how you manage scope, schedule, and budget, they might jump right into some of like the tools and things of that nature. But I think having that kickoff meeting, and this is part of our training that we do as well at Parametrics, having that kickoff meeting up front to set the expectations is so critical because how do you manage the scope, schedule, and budget if you don't understand what the client's expectations are for the scope, schedule, and budget? Because the way you manage it effectively is like one way is to make sure that you're delivering what they expect on it. And so- mm -hmm. I'm really happy to hear you kind of lead with that. And for those of you out there that are PMs, maybe new PMs or soon to be PMs, when you set up a project, I'm sure your firm, just like Parametrics, is going to have things you need to go through to do like your project setup with the project number and the phases and all that. But the most important aspect of setting up the project usually is having an, a kickoff meeting in the beginning where you could have two, like Mallory said, you could have an internal one and then bring in your client, you could have one depending on the size of the project, but setting the expectations for all parties involved, right? Like this is what success looks like on this project so that you know exactly what you need to deliver. And I think that that's such a, such a critical part of project management. So I'm glad you kind of mentioned that right off the bat there. So staying with the theme of meetings here, how mm -hmm. often do you meet with your team internally in terms of project management, um, and, and talk about the importance, kind of the importance and how regularly you meet with your team. It, it really depends on the size of the project and kind of what, what we're doing, what the budget is. But my goal is to um, at least meet biweekly and ideally it's weekly. Um, and there's probably, you know, little check-ins with maybe this team is working on something really big and I need to check in with them more often. Um, so, you know, it's maybe more frequently with that the teams throughout the life cycle of the project. But um, I think the why it's important to project management because your your project team, <laughs> it can quickly get away from you. Um, and and it's not, you know, through no fault of of their own, but they, you know, people can be headed down a track. And um, if you, you know, you are in direct communication with the client, you're also in direct responsibility for that scope schedule budget. Sure. And so you've got, you're the one that's really got the, a lot of times has the full picture of, okay, this is, this is the, the goal we're headed towards. And, um, sometimes folks can kind of get off off track a little bit. So I think that's really the big thing is just making sure that uh, you you check in regularly so that everybody keeps head, heading towards the same mission, the same goal. Um, go back to that kickoff meeting. What were you what were you set out to do in the first place? So yeah, no, that's great. Like setting the tone from the beginning. And you're right. like as the PM, you're gonna kind of have a lot of that information in your own head that you're talking with clients or communicating with clients. So the ability to be able to get that information to the team is so important. And this is also something we talk about in the training. If you're not communicating that to your team and they start working on things that are outside of the scope of work or whatever the case may be, that's where you can run into some big challenges in terms of project management. So that having that regular form when you can get everything out that your team needs to be aware of, I think is, is really important. And, and that being said, kind of, Continuing to go down the road here of communication, it's really important, of course, to always be open and honest with all of your clients. And to do that, you're going to have to have difficult conversations with clients on all projects. It just it happens because things happen on projects. You're someone who's a younger engineer, a younger project manager, not just in age, but in terms of experience level. Can you talk a little bit about how you've kind of approached difficult conversations because I know it can be difficult especially when you're younger in your career yeah and it 
it, it changes over time and it changes with each conversation that you've had and you maybe like pick up little techniques and tricks uh, as time goes on, but, um, really going back to that honesty thing. So if, if you've been upfront and honest with your client from the beginning, you've been truthful, you know, they've, they've got that understanding that, okay, like you're not gonna, you know, blow a bunch of smoke, then, then it makes it easier when you have, when you do run into an issue and you do have to bring that, that issue up, they at least know, okay, you know, Mallory's not, she's not trying to pass one by me. Um, Mm -hmm. We really are having an an honest conversation. And and so, yeah, I think if you just kind of start from the beginning, um, being yourself and being honest, it, it, will make the conversation a little bit less painful, not hundred percent all the time, but <laughs> no, I mean, and listen, and that's the thing that we always sort of drive home to project managers that things happen on projects, bad things mm-hmm. will happen, right? Things that are challenging, you know, supply chain right now is crazy. There's lots of things with costs and schedules and inflation and things that there's going to be bad news to deliver. And I think that what happens a lot for project managers, especially newer project managers that just like anyone else, they want to succeed. They want to do good on their first couple of projects. It's easy to want to be that person who says, yes, 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 yes. You know, like, yes, this will work. Yes, we can get it done on time. Yes, there's no problems here. And in reality, it feels good to do that in the moment, but the results of that are usually pretty negative for yourself, for your company. And so I kind of found in my own experience, like the first few times you do it, it's kind of like ripping the bandaid off. Like you have to just kind of say, this is bad news and I have to tell you what it is. But like Mallory said, I think the more you do it, the more comfortable you become. And not just because you get more comfortable with it, but you start to realize that the client ultimately just wants you to tell them the truth. I mean, right. It's like their money, it's their bottom line, it's their project, it's their property, whatever the case may be. And I think if you were a buyer in a sense, like you would want the same thing to happen. Like if you're doing a home renovation and the contractor says, we just found a massive problem in the middle of your house, you're not going to want them to like cover that up or kind of smooth it over. Like you're going to want to know the problem. And so I know sometimes when we're sitting here on the podcast and talking through it, I don't want it to come off to the listener that's like, oh, it's easy. You just have a, you know, have that conversation because we know it's not that easy. But I think from both of what, what both of us said here today, it does get easier and it does help you to be a real valued like advisor for your clients because they know that you'll deliver that news to them. Yeah, there's been two things. There's been a couple of things that have uh, kind of hitting on your points that have stuck with me through my career. And and one is you can't fake experience. So mm-hmm. and and when mm-hmm. I was you know younger in my career, I was like, eh, you guys are crazy. I <laughs> I can figure this out. But the reality is, is that no, you you can't fake experience. It's just it, there. There's just things that you pick up over time, um, and then yeah, the other thing is, is put put yourself being being able to have empathy and and really put yourself into everybody else's shoes, whether that's the client or that's your drafter. Um, put yourself into those that that person's shoes and really understand. Okay, where are they coming from? when they're, when they're doing this action and, and being able to do that, you'll really get a lot farther in the conversation. Yeah. No, so. that's, that last point is a good one and also not hard to do, but I mean, if you take the time to sit down and say, I have to think about it from the client's perspective for five, 10 minutes here and just think about what they're going through. It can help you inform your approach at least. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think also to Mallory's point, like, when you go through these experiences, you kind of need to reflect on them because this is like your, uh, this is like the way you can become better, right? Like if you don't do a good job in your career, cause you feel like, Hey, I know how to deal with this and something happens, at least try to take note of it and understand what worked and what didn't work and maybe what you could have did better next time. Cause that's really the only way you can improve. And, you know, listen, I think, and I'll mention it again. I think the way to develop great project managers in a firm is to do a blend of, Yes, you should hopefully have some kind of developmental program that you, they can go through so they can learn some of the, the strategies, the concepts, some knowledge sharing, but also give them the opportunity to manage projects at a young age or at least get involved in some project management tasks, even they're, if they're not the actual project manager, because it's really the combination of two things, those two things that make for a great project manager. 
Um, whereas just one without the other, it kind of leaves a lot to be desired by, by that PM potentially. All right, so as project managers, Mallory, we kind of always want to take on more work, right? It's really hard for us to say, no, we're too busy, but it's just not possible. I mean, we only have so much time in the day that we're able to you know, keep adding more tasks to our day. So how do you know when kind of to say no, and like how you're, when you know your workload is just too much and, and how can you do that in a way as a project manager that you're not you know, coming off as like rude or you know, someone who's not looking to like help out? This has been a really uh, hard lesson for me to learn, and uh, I've had to learn it. I've so I'm I'm a new mom. I have a nine month old son, oh, and so thank you. And and so that honestly has been the the kicker to hey, there's only so many times in the day. And by the way, you've got to go pick up at daycare before they close, or you're gonna get charged a ton of money. And so um, yeah, really, there's. Th- there's only so much you can do as a PM and um, deliver great client service. So I think client service being one of the, one of my own personal core values and also a big um, thing here at parametrics is Mm -hmm. um, delivering great projects and, and doing it well. Um, Because if you don't, you're probably, you might not get that call back. And so you really have to uh, take, take, kind of take your, take yourself out of those, like that exciting, you know, shoes for a little bit and, um, look into yourself and say, okay, if this, if I were to take on this opportunity, would I really do a good job or is it just not, not one for me? And yeah, you might say, you might say no, and, uh, you might have to, you know, make a difficult conversation and call your client and say, Hey, I just, I just couldn't take that thing on, but, but, and maybe you come up with a, a, a caveat or, you know, maybe there's somebody else in your company, another uh, staff member that is looking for the, a project management opportunity that you can say, you know, they've worked on this project, Mm -hmm. you know, them, they can take on this PM, PM role for you. So I don't know, there's ways you can go around it, but um, yeah, you definitely have to uh, put boundaries on, on yourself in your career to, to show up and be your best self too. So. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think the example that you gave around the daycare is a good one, just because I think when we have some of these other things that are important to us in life that force us to understand that, you know, work isn't the only thing that exists for us. And quite frankly, I don't think a company wants that to be the case either, because like you said, you know, someone, you go to work and you go home, but you're still the same person. So like you need to be able to kind of have all those different components of your life. And I found the same thing as you, when you have some of those external responsibilities, it's helpful for you to really get more focused at work and maybe be more intentional. And even, you know, not that I'm crazy about the word productive, but in this case, maybe it makes sense. But like for me, even one time, a couple of summers ago, we went to visit my in-laws and I just kind of said to myself, I'm only going to work in the mornings this week so I can, you know, enjoy some time with them in the afternoons. And I found that I I happen to get like almost as much stuff done in the morning as I normally would get done in the entire day. So I think when we kind of force ourselves to work in a certain way, and like you said, think about who you can share something with, which also gives an opportunity to others to kind of mentor them and help them to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really a valuable way. And I think we just need to think about that as project managers in that we can't always do everything. And that mindset is not only beneficial for yourself to avoid things like burnout, which are obviously a real thing these days, but also you have team members around you and they want an opportunity and they can grow and you can help them do that. So um, I think really what kind of some of the examples that Mallory gives are really good examples you could think about on how you can still feel like a competent leader in in your organization, but also be able to help others grow in that way. And that's leadership right there. Yeah. I mean, that's that's being a good leader is to provide others opportunity. So in in my experience, the quote unquote worst, if you will, leaders that I've had are the ones that wouldn't give me opportunities. And and maybe mm-hmm. the reason they didn't do it is because like they felt that they had to take on everything like we're talking about. But the consequences, kind of the ripple effects of that can kind of be tough for the people around you in terms of their development. And and like Mallory said your leadership development overall. 
All right, so we packed a lot of good stuff in there. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back in just a minute and we'll wrap up with our PM pitfalls segment. We'll be right back. All right, we are back with Mallory Wildy. Mallory is a transportation-focused civil engineer and project manager at Parametrics. We've had the opportunity at EMI to do a lot of work with Parametrics on building a PM development program with various levels. And we've kind of covered a lot of the topics that we talk about in, in the training program here with Mallory so far. But Mallory, now I'm going to throw one last question at you here. This is our PM pitfall segment. What is the biggest project management pitfall that you've identified or challenge that you've seen or experienced? And how might you help some of the PMs out there dealing with it, either overcome it um, in their in their project management efforts? Yeah, when, when I was thinking about this question, I think the biggest thing for me is, you know, I was looking back at, okay, which, which PMs have I worked with that have been really easy to work with and that I've enjoyed working with and, and that I, I want to do good work for? And then which PMs have I worked with that I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'd ever do another project with them. And that the commonality between them is uh, really finding that PM that's approachable. So um, being somebody that if you are running into an issue, you can they can you can go to them and and ask them questions and don't feel like they're um, you know I, I use the word know it all but uh, mm -hmm. a lot of times as PMs we're not necessarily the technical experts on our our projects we're just the ones that are you know managing the overall work and so um, being able to trust in your team and trust that they do have the right answer and do, um, you know, know where things are going is a really big um, thing in, in success in my mind as a PM. So um, having a little bit of humility will, will go a long way. Um, I, I just think that'll really get a lot of, a lot better success for buy-in from your teams um, so that you can, you know, continue going to that salt solving the mission. Yeah. No, I mean, I think the whole idea of being approachable as a project manager is so important because I think what happens in a lot of consulting firms that we work with or that I've seen is that a project manager can be very intimidating for someone on the project manager's team, right? Because you're so busy. I can't bother you. Like you're billable. You're dealing with clients. And the challenge with that mindset is that then there's a situation where they're not going to develop as much as they need to because they're not going to ask the right questions. And I feel like that's never something that we want to have happen as leaders, and we never want to discourage that. And you've kind of you've kind of made mention of that a few times already today throughout of, throughout our episode here. And so I really like the idea of thinking about how you can be someone who's you know humble, open, kind, sharing, and just approachable. I think is really the best way to say it because. I even tell my team members, especially if there's a new team member at EMI, I'll try to tell them like, listen, in the beginning, if you feel like you need to ask whatever questions you need to ask, I welcome them. And I sometimes even say, I'll be, I might be a little bit worried if I'm not getting a lot of questions from you in the beginning, because I feel like you got to like put someone at ease. So they feel, mm -hmm. oh, this is good. You know, Anthony's open to me asking him a question. Because if you think about it, if they don't ask you a question and then they go off on a tangent on a project for 10, 15, 20 hours, I mean, not only does that hurt the project, but again, the result of that is their confidence might have to be built back up, which is something that is not easy to do and takes a lot of time. So, well, and it's a reflection on, it'll end up as a reflection on you, right? You, yeah. if they go off on a tangent for 20 hours, where does that time go? Are, are you going to charge that all to the client? I don't think so. Exactly. Um, so, so what, you know, what happens there? Um, I, I think it's important to, to be, you know, there is no there there is no dumb question and yep. as the pm being able to ask the dumb question <laughs> will set the stage for oh maybe at my t you know maybe those team members will also be able to come forward and ask you know the quote dumb question um so that everything gets laid out there and in the end you're you're just like a, you know you're all on the same page you're all driving forward so no, I, I love that. And I think just the whole idea of that approach and mindset of constantly instilling it in your team members, you know, promoting like a atmosphere of like learning and knowledge sharing is such an important thing. And that's really what we've tried to do a lot with the parametrics uh, 
the project management development program. We have like some collaboration calls we're instilling between sessions and stuff, because really like that's really what project management is, especially when you get into a firm like a parametrics or a larger consulting firm where you have project managers in different parts of the country and regions, and they're all developing best practices. And if they can share them with the rest of the PMs, like one tip, like maybe Mallory can give someone else can save that person so much time on their projects or make them have better client relationships. So I think that's one of the things too, that's really just important to think about as you're approachable and as you're helping teams grow, that knowledge, the more you can share that, just the more beneficial it's going to be for everybody. So Mallory, I thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy day to come on the podcast and share some of your experiences as a project manager so far. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been great. All right. So once again, that's Mallory Wildy from Parametrics. You can check out Parametrics website at parametrics.com. They are a consulting firm that has done a lot of really high profile projects, have won a lot of awards, and they have a lot of career opportunities available for you now. So again, you can check them out at parametrics.com. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Mallory. She made so many good points about developing the next generation of project managers, having those conversations with clients, and really being approachable as a project manager. We've really enjoyed all of the work that we've gotten to do with Parametrics and building and delivering their programs. Well, if you like that video, we've got a lot more coming, so please consider subscribing to our channel here. We put out videos like this on a weekly basis to help engineers become better project managers and better leaders. I'll see you next week.